Okay, we will get started. Welcome to the blood pressure uh, self-monitoring program nutrition education seminar. Um, I'm Megan again. Thanks for coming back. Or if this is your first time, thanks for being here. Uh, these nutrition seminars address various ways of eating that we should be mindful of to stay healthy and effectively manage our blood pressure. Uh, today, we're going to review nutrition and blood pressure facts, uh, fats and oils, vitamins and minerals, all the healthy snacks, and dining out tips. And I have, I feel like I have kind of a lot to talk about, so um, I'll cut some things out if we if we are short on time. So I want to make sure that we have plenty of time to answer any questions. Um, what we've learned so far is that our food choices impact our blood pressure. We need to consider nutrition as part of a healthy lifestyle that keeps our blood pressure well managed. Eating for a healthy heart is a key factor in the fight to prevent cardiovascular disease, which includes coronary heart disease, stroke, and heart failure. A healthy meal pattern emphasizes eating a variety of vegetables and fruits, whole grains, lean proteins, nuts and seeds. Uh, doing this can help control your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and manage your weight. And as we've been learning, limiting salt, saturated fat, trans fat, and sweets in your diet can actually lower your blood pressure. Now, I don't want to get too caught up on calories. A lot of people come into my office and they're worried about calories. And we don't need to be counting calories. That's just not maintainable. It's not something we want to do every day. Um, we aren't doing a diet. We are trying to make small changes that we can maintain for the rest of our lives, no matter what's going on. We are on a lifestyle change. So focusing on limiting the saturated fats, added sugar, and sodium will get you there. That's something that you could do every day. So don't stress about the calories. Remember this, this is my native plate and we'll be using this as a guide for our meals, using a nine inch plate and cutting it into a quarter of protein, a quarter starch and half vegetables. That way we don't need to be weighing our food. Um, we want to be drinking unsweetened beverages like water, coffee and tea and have a side of fruit for sweetness. My native plate ensures that we'll get the variety of food we need and at the right proportions. So this is what a one serving of the six to eight servings of grains a day looks like. It's a fist of rice. Um, but when we have a sandwich, we typically have two slices of bread. So that's two of our six to eight servings of starches. The one that always catches me off guard is the half of a regular bagel. I feel like bagels keep getting bigger and bigger. Um, this weekend I went to the farmer's market and I saw a bagel there that was bigger than both of my hands. <laughs> um, I knew that bagel had to be like four servings instead of two. I just make sure that everybody is muted here. Okay. Um, this slide is sort of neat in that it's showing that one serving of vegetables looks like a handful, basically. Um, and we need to be getting four to five servings each of fruits and vegetables. So just getting four to five handfuls of each per day kind of simplifies it. So again, we don't need to be weighing our food. This slide is saying six or fewer servings of lean protein per day. But the thing I want to point out is that not many of us eat one ounce of meat at a time. A good serving of meat is shown and it's about the size of your palm or the deck of, or, or a deck of cards. Um, so if we had, that's about three ounces. So if we had three ounces of chicken breast, we would still have three more servings of protein we could have that day. So maybe for lunch, we have um, a half a cup of black beans. And for breakfast, we might have two eggs and then three ounces of chicken breast for dinner. That's our six servings. The second thing I want to point out is what do they mean when they say lean protein? 
So we're talking about protein that's low in saturated fat, um, such as beans, salmon, trout, eggs, nuts, game meat, 93% um, lean beef, skinless chicken breast, and tofu. And two to three servings recommended of low fat dairy. Now don't get too worked up about this if you're lactose intolerant like many of us are. Um, the reason for the two to three servings of low fat dairy is to ensure adequate calcium. Um, but there are plenty of other things with calcium in them. What else has calcium? Almonds, broccoli, spinach, tofu, black beans, collard greens, all your greens, uh, bok choy, and then fortified alternative milks like soy milk, almond milk, they'll have the calcium. This slide is back. This one just highlights and reminds us that most of our sodium comes from fast food, restaurants, and processed food. 75% of the sodium we eat is processed or from restaurant foods. Um, what are some ways that you guys have been working on reducing your sodium? I've just been eating um, more fresh vegetables um, and I don't, I don't put my salad dressing on it. You know, I switched over, I couldn't find a reduced sodium salad dressing. I just switched over to a balsamic vinegar one because it doesn't have as much fat in it, you know? Um, and I don't put it on the salad. I just, um, I'll just dip my fork in it, you know? I put it in a little side cup, so. Oh, great ideas. Yeah, the salad dressing has the sodium that we just didn't even know it had. Um, unfortunately, it's, it is a little difficult to find low sodium salad dressing. It's one of those things where um, we got to start researching recipes to make our own salad dressing sometimes um, to find the salad dressing that's really going to work for us that we feel like tastes the same and um, is really something that we're going to want to eat. Oh, Christine says she's been eating a lot of fresh um, food instead of the pre-made foods. That's awesome. That is so good to hear. Okay, moving on to fats and oils. Um, the next two slides will have some examples of different types of fats. On this slide, we want to talk about increasing our monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and omega-3s. These are the good fats, the healthy fats. So unsaturated fats, they're typically uh, liquid at room temperature. So we're thinking of like olive oil, vegetable oil, um, unsaturated fatty acids. So these are the things we want more of, avocado, nuts, seeds, salmon, um, walnuts, flaxseed, tuna. And then, then that brings us to the saturated fats and trans fats. So saturated fats are typically solid at room temperature, like butter and lard, um, poultry with the skin on, um, that's all saturated fat. And then trans fat are what they put in baked goods that they sell at like the grocery store. So your cakes, your pie crusts, your biscuits, and also stick margarines are trans fats. But um, as a nation, we've really been trying to get rid of trans fats. Um, they've really started to decrease that a lot. So we want less of these. Any questions on that? Megan, I do have a question. Yeah. I have um, coconut oil. I have the kind that solidifies at room temperature, but I also have some coconut oil that stays liquid at room temperature. So oh. would that would that both be still the bad fats? Well, coconut oil is one of those things that they kind of go back and forth about if it's good or not, because it has um, some of these things called MCTs that are really good for you. Um, so it is a saturated fat, unfortunately, um, but it does have some good properties. So they're really on the fence about coconut oil. Okay, thank you. Yes, so sorry I can't provide more information about that. It's kind of like eggs where they're on the fence about the whole cholesterol thing. Yeah. 
Okay. So the best way to get our nutrient needs is to eat a variety of color rich foods in our diet. That's how we're going to get all these vitamins and minerals. Um, eating a variety will help meet our needs and then we won't have to supplement. But why are we emphasizing potassium? Well, potassium reduces the effect of sodium by increasing the amount of sodium we excrete in our urine. It relaxes our blood vessel walls, which helps reduce the blood pressure. And most Americans only consume about 2,600 milligrams of potassium a day, which the recommended is about 4,700 milligrams. Um, but too much potassium as you're getting older is more difficult for the kidneys to remove. So we really wanna caution on supplementing potassium with pills or, um, or basically just dietary supplements. We really wanna get our potassium from food. Um, anybody with a kidney condition or anybody taking lisinopril, they shouldn't be supplementing their potassium. So how can we get potassium through foods? Um, it's in potatoes, beans, prune juice and carrot juice, seafood, like salmon, tuna, snapper. It's in all the leafy greens. It's in tomatoes, bananas, of course, um, cantaloupe, dates, nectarines, oranges, avocados. They all have really high potassium. Okay, on to some healthy snacks. I know we talked about this a little before, but I'd like to show you guys a different way of thinking about it. Okay, so we got some crunchy snacks, apples, carrots, celery, brown rice uh, cakes, whole grain crackers. We can think about it as like chewy snacks, maybe some seeds or some nuts, some dried fruit without added sugar or toast with a nut butter. We can think about it as sweet snacks like raisins, dates, frozen fruit, like grapes or frozen bananas, uh, fresh fruit. We can think about low-fat uh, yogurt with fruit. These are all really great heart-healthy options for snacks. Um, we can think about it like thirst quenchers, infused water, uh, sparkling water. We can make our own teas, um, black coffee, these are all really good snacks. Does anybody have any questions about the snacks before we move on? You left out the chocolate group. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. We wanna have dark chocolate because that's really good for our heart. Yeah, yeah a little, little tiny bit of dark chocolate. That's yep. a good snack. Yep, we gotta have yeah. at least one ounce of dark chocolate a day, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh sun tea is here yes oh it's the perfect season for sun tea absolutely okay okay now um the final section is about dining out uh so eating out at restaurants and ordering takeout What makes it hard to make healthy choices when we eat away from home? What do you guys find difficult? It's hard for me, everything about it. Um, all the different dietary restrictions I have, there's so many things I can't eat. So I just treat it as a treat because I don't eat out very often. And I just limit my portions. I've always uh, ordered a to-go box when I first get there and I divide up my meal, how much I want to eat and how much I don't, put it in the to-go box. And then I just eat the amount left on my plate, you know, that I've decided, you know, beforehand how much to eat. And I make it my, my salt treat for the day. Oh, you know, the rest awesome. of the day I just limit, you know, or just don't have any more salt. So that, that's how I do a eating out kind of thing. That's really smart. I don't eat out a lot because I, I am kind of afraid of what they put into the food. I don't know, you know. Um, I used to like to eat 
uh, Chinese food, but then it started hurting my stomach. Um, and so now I just make my own because it's, it's just safer. I mean, it's, I don't know what they're adding, but whatever it is, it's, it's yeah. not a good scene. Yeah. Even when they're using like the key words on the menu, like grilled, we still don't know how much salt is in there. Right, Christine? Like they're not really telling us this is really salty and, and things like, like we've even found like breakfast cereal has added salt even though it's so sugary. So there are so many, there's so much um, hidden stuff when we're eating out that makes it really difficult. Um, here, I just wanted to display some helpful words that will alert us to the more heart healthy options like grilled, uh, steamed, baked, whole grain, broiled. Um, these are really gonna alert you to stuff that's gonna be low in saturated fat. But how about some substitutions we could make at the restaurant? Because remember, we're not saying no more fun stuff. We just wanna take those small steps to decrease some of these less, less healthy options. So like for example, this first meal, we could choose a smaller cheeseburger we could choose smaller fries. We could even swap the soda for unsweetened tea. And we still, we're still going out. Uh, we could even do another swap and substitute uh, a chicken sandwich. So chicken without the skin sandwich. Um, sometimes, and sometimes we have to go out. Sometimes we're traveling and we don't have the option to make our food in advance. Um, how about this next one? We're saying, you know, we can still have the pizza, but how about, how can we make it more healthy? Um, so maybe a regular crust instead of the stuffed crust or veggie pizza instead of the meat lovers, which might be really high in saturated fat. Um, maybe choosing to for a just light cheese amount instead of the regular cheese. Um, these are all going to help us still still be able to get these options, but making uh, more heart healthy choices. We do know that the portion size they give us is probably too big. They don't use a nine inch plate, right? So what can we do? Debbie had a great idea. Um, I'm really excited about leftovers. Well, I try to ask for a box right away too, so I can enjoy the meal twice. I love leftovers. Um, sometimes you can ask, say, you and your friend will share the item. Let me just have an extra plate. Um, but we, we do know that the portion sizes are much bigger than what we'd want. So there is a way around it. Um, you can say you want the side of this item instead of the main course. Um, like a side of macaroni and cheese instead of a main mac and cheese um, or a child size portion. Now I have an activity for this. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you is um, to think of a healthy alternative to each meal or snack. So picture like a Jimmy Dean's breakfast sandwich here with hash browns and an orange juice. And try to think about what types of things would be high in salt here. Um, could we replace some of the meats, some of the cheeses? Um, what do you guys think? Wow. Take away the hash browns and have some fresh fruit instead. Oh yeah, I love that. Maybe ask them to go light on the meat and cheese when they make it for you. Mm, yeah, maybe less meat, less cheese. Yeah.
Hmm. Is it possible to ask them not to salt it? Yeah, you can also ask um, to put less salt on, on your food. Absolutely. Season my foodlands. Absolutely. Wonder if you could substitute. I mean, sausage has a lot of salt in it. it does. And, but I I don't know what to substitute. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have the I wouldn't have the croissant sandwich mm -hmm. myself. But I I don't know what to substitute for that sausage. Ooh, Christine says, "What about turkey or ground chicken?" I love that. There you go. Yeah, yeah. What about like um, some turkey bacon? or something like that instead of the sausage and you're still kind of feeling breakfasty. Let's see here. Okay, so they said maybe a veggie breakfast sandwich with a whole grain English muffin, sweet potato fries, and an orange fruit cup. Now, technically, I, when I saw this, I, I didn't quite understand why they needed to replace the orange juice with the orange fruit cup because there's no sodium in the orange juice. Um, as compared to the orange fruit cup. Um, but it is all about getting you know, like fresh fruits. So, um, but what I did, what I did look up was the nutrition label for a Jimmy Dean's breakfast sandwich. And I found the sodium to be 610 milligrams. And that just shocked me. And then we look at the saturated fat and it's 50% of our daily value. Oh my gosh. So it looks to me like they still have the cheese on here, maybe like a low fat cheese and like some tomatoes, mushrooms, some greens. Um, so there's there's just one, one way to do some substitutions, but I really like your guys' idea of the chicken and ground turkey and the fresh fruit. Um, maybe not doing a croissant as the bread. Okay, next one is a honey bun for a morning snack. What could we replace that with? You like something sweet. I like those little Biscoff crackers oh. or cookies. You know, you can have four of them for only 24 carbs. And they're not high sodium, they're not super low sodium, but they're a nice little snack, you know, yeah. four of them, or even two of them are very satisfying for a sweet tooth. Yeah. Ooh, fruit parfait. That's a great idea. Yeah. What about some fresh fruit? That sounds great. Okay, let's see what they said. Oh, they said a banana. Okay, so I actually looked up the nutrition label on a honey bun. And I found the sodium to be 450 milligrams of a hostess honey bun. Ouch. Like that's pretty significant. And 33 grams of sugars. That's, or 66 carbs. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. That's your whole meal. Plus some. Wow. 85% of your saturated fat. Oh. No more fun for that day. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, this is a good one. Okay, a turkey sandwich with a side salad and a pickle. Ooh, how much sodium does that dressing have? Ooh, that's a good one. What else could we substitute? I love pickles, but are pickles high in kind of high in salt? I they mean, they are. They are. I mean, they're wonderful and crunchy and stuff, but boy, the process is, yeah. Ah. You'd be better off substituting some fresh cucumber for it. Oh, yeah. Cucumbers or carrot slit sticks. That sounds awesome. Make your own vinaigrette. I love it. Um, sometimes the lunch meat or the cheese can be really high in sodium. Um, let's see what they said. Uh, oh, a turkey sandwich with a side salad and cucumber slices. So they really took out um, a lot of the salty condiments and sauces and replaced it with veggies. 
um, to still up the flavor. They also did a salt-free salad dressing, which we all know that's hard to find. So we might have to make our own, our own vinaigrette. But what I really found to be interesting was I looked up the nutrition labels on the pickle and the serving size is two thirds of a spear. I don't even understand how someone would eat two thirds of a spear of a pickle. I'm like, why, why would you do that to yourself? Um, so two thirds a spear serving size is 260 milligrams of sodium. And then the salad dressing, if we did just the two tablespoons, it would be 290 milligrams. Oh, yeah. And then they have whole wheat bread on there. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Great substitution. Okay. Okay. How about a little discussion? What might you replace in your cabinets and fridge to have more heart healthy snacks and food on hand? I would probably pre-prepare my snack foods so that they're in easy bite-sized pieces. Um, and that way I can take them to work as well. So carrot sticks, cucumber slices, um, any type of um, snacks that are easily accessible or just take a banana to work for a snack as well. Yeah, great idea. It's all about having those foods kind of in our face. So like putting those fresh fruits on the counter if we can, just to remind us, like these are what we want to tempt ourselves with. You know, these are what we want more of. Um, how might an online menu be helpful? Oh, you mean for the... For the restaurant itself, yeah, go on. Yeah. What if you what if you looked up the stuff online first? Yeah. Yeah. That turkey sandwich that made me hungry with the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> right. The turkey sandwich. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But I don't put cheese on my sandwich. I, I just, I like just turkey with mustard. It's, oh, ooh, to die for. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that cheese can be a bugger about the sodium. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Nicole's saying um, she likes to look at the menu first to even see if she wants to go out to eat there. That's a great idea, too. Yeah, I want to see what my options are going to be. Um that way I don't feel limited. Like, do they really have stuff that's gonna cater to what I want to eat? Yeah. And so much is online right now. Um, we didn't have that option before. Okay, and let's see what's next here. Okay, here it is. As promised, the slide that reminds us to keep up on our physical activity, each session lowers our blood pressure that day. So a consistent routine will help keep your blood pressure lower and any type of activity works. Um, and just, you know, go at your own pace. How have you guys been doing with your exercise goals? I haven't uh, done very well. My uh, d dizziness has been a lot and I haven't been able to really walk. So I've been trying to do more chair exercises because I can't get, get out and walk around like I want to. Oh, that's very smart, Debbie. Awesome. I went ahead and bought my dog stroller. <gasps> you did? 
did. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, I found one for pretty reasonable out on Amazon. So uh, yeah, that was good because um, I like, I don't like leaving my dog, you know, kind of behind. And so um, now he can just go right with me and, and the heat thankfully has um, tapered back. So mm -hmm. it's made it a lot easier to walk outside. So yeah, sometimes they just don't want to go very far, but you want to take them for a longer ride. That's it. Yeah. And he can be really stubborn. He'll just sit right down, you know, and. <laughs> yeah. My goals for um, working out and doing more, I haven't been able to do as much as I thought I was going to do recreationally. Um, it's mostly been kind of carting the kids around wherever they need to go. However, I've been over the weekend doing some yard work, which seemed to work up a good sweat. So even though it's not the thing I would normally like to do, it's something that definitely got my heart pumping. So I consider that a little bit of exercise. Oh my gosh, absolutely. I consider the, the gardening exercise. I'm always like, I cannot believe how much weeds I had to pull or how much this and it really, you feel it in the weirdest spots the next day. <laughs> Anybody have any upcoming goals they want to share? So just, we've started out on a new walking um, thing at work. So every Friday for 30 minutes, we're going to walk part of the lake together as um, like a whole group, wow. anybody available. So we're going to start up doing that on Fridays. Oh, so yeah. that's going to help me kind of achieve some of my goals, which is helpful. That is so rad. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Nicole sent me um, a video uh, of some uh, mother-daughter team doing uh, chair exercises, and I haven't had a chance. I mean, it, it, the heat tapered back, so I'd rather be outside, you know, um, than, than indoors, and so I haven't, but that's something that's on my list is to, for the days that, um, you know, when the heat is on, um, to you know, do those exercises inside the house rather than, than not, you yep. know. Absolutely. We, we just got to keep adjusting, whether it's the weather that's throwing us off, might be rain, it might be too much heat. Um, it might be that our dogs don't want to walk very far. <laughs> yeah, because my body says, you know, oh, well, that's a barrier and, you know, don't, it's okay. You can slack off. And it's like, well, no, you can't. <laughs> yeah. Um, I once had somebody tell me like, if you're waiting around for the time that you want to exercise, it might never come. And so it's kind of like getting out of bed. We don't want to get out of bed in the morning and to just focus on the physicalness of getting out of bed putting the sheets over us and putting our legs down and just kind of boosting ourselves up. So the same thing when we're working out, we might not ever want to be active, but it's just kind of something that as, um, as we want to be more healthy, we just have to go through the motions. And so if we wait for that time where it's like, oh, I can't wait to, to go for a walk, it, it just might not happen that day. I remind myself that I'm the only one that can do that for me. You know, if I want to reap the benefits in the future, be healthier and not be stuck in my chair all day, then I'm the one that has to decide and, and take care of myself. No one else can do that for me. Oh, I love that. That's so true. And it's a gift we can give ourselves. It's that healthiness, you know, going for a walk or doing something a little bit active. Well, let's see here. What do you guys think of the class? 
I liked it. It was good. Yeah, it was good. What would you guys like to see more of? I like the whole substitution game. That was that was kind of cool. I mean, and, and plus it made you think, you know, about what what you can uh, have instead of, you know, uh, something that's higher in salt, higher in sodium. You know, what can you have instead? I like I like that. Oh yeah, that is, that, that is fun because yeah, you don't realize how much salt is in the, the things until we start really taking apart the labels and nobody really really except for me likes looking at labels <laughs> that's it <laughs> I don't know Megan I like looking at labels too okay okay <laughs> awesome usually I pick it up look at it and think oh and put it back on the shelf <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> is there any more classes you think we should offer What do you mean? What do you mean exactly by that? Um, like I could do more classes on like um, fats, unsaturated fats and um, heart healthy fats. Um, I could do more classes on um, reading labels. I know I have a grocery store tour coming up and I, I do a lot of um, reading on there, but um, and a lot of label reading on my one-to-one -one appointments, but um, I, I feel like um, you can never learn as much as you want to learn about reading labels. You know, there's always so much to learn. Yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, the idea of, of, you know, because fat is a tricky thing. That would be, that would be a good one. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, because you think that you're well like uh, the one gal was saying with the coconut oil you know um, you know you don't know what the what the deal is and maybe be able to go a little more in depth with with that kind of stuff great idea yeah absolutely because there are things like coconut oil or egg yolks that have a very mixed feeling a mixed debate about them Mm -hmm. um, it would be really great to just have a discussion about those. I love it. Controversial food items. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, any um, sodium questions or anything before we wrap it up for the day for our four classes? Anything um, I didn't cover? Nope. I will be eternally sad that pickles are so bad. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys taking the time out for me today and, and for the last, um, you know, four sessions. It's been really fun. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I've enjoyed it, Megan. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Oh, fats and sugars. Yeah. That's a great one. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, hopefully more classes to come. I'll keep you guys in the loop. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great bye rest bye. of the day. You too. Bye-bye.